This video should come with a trigger warning because I know I'm about to offend a lot of eyewear enthusiasts. But in the world of eyewear, there are a lot of overrated frame brands. And there are actually quite a lot of underrated frame brands as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So hi, I'm Robert, Style and Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pay you with your perfect pair of glasses. And I am super passionate about getting the best frames, not necessarily the most popular frames or what everybody else wants, not necessarily impressing others, but just getting the right eyewear for you. Now, before I start, I want to say that in all three of the frame brands that I'm going to class as overrated, I actually think they're pretty good. So please try not to take too much offense at what I'm about to say. I'm definitely not advocating that you don't buy those frame brands. But on the underrated side, I think there is a lot of value to be had there and a lot of amazing glasses that you might not have considered. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel recently. Our channel is actually experiencing exponential growth and I really want to keep that going. So if you're not currently subscribed, please subscribe for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. We've got a lot coming up this year, whether it's new brands that we're going to be showcasing for the first time, whether it's road trips to Europe, I'm going to be designing some of my very own eyewear styles that are exclusive to us. And I'm so excited about the year ahead. So I hope you'll be along for the journey. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about glasses. So the third most overrated brand, in my opinion, is Lindbergh. And it's not really because they are bad glasses, because do you know what? The quality of Lindbergh is pretty high. I would say excellent quality. It's not even about the designs either, because I think the designs are really good. It's more about the mentality that surrounds the brand. You see, within our community of opticians, obviously I get to meet a lot of others within my field. And I, I find it almost very snobby the way that a lot of opticians are like, oh, what do you stock? Well, we stock Lindbergh. It's like seen as the creme de la creme of eyewear. 10 years ago, that probably was the case. They came up with their own unique proprietary mechanism for attaching rimless frames, which is still pretty good to be fair. The quality was better than virtually everything else at the time. But I think because of that kind of mentality where opticians see it as the pinnacle, they've become really complacent. And I've seen very little innovation from Lindbergh in the last 10 years. I feel like the designs that they come out with now, they could have come out with then. And there's two kind of key aspects to Lindbergh. You've got the ultra minimalistic rimless frames, in which case I think there are better brands out there. Like for example, Flare, who I'm a huge advocate for. Flare glasses are lighter, they're more durable. If you really want that minimalistic look, to me, Flare are better. They also have their own proprietary mechanism for attaching the lenses, but unlike Lindbergh, it's a lot more solid and even really flexible at the drill points. This one is the 693 and it's probably our most popular rimless frame. People have ordered it from us from all over the world. I love how you can virtually tie it in knots. It's so flexible, but still really strong. Ultra lightweight, I think it's 2.2 grams. So technically the lightest frame in the world. But it's not just Flair who, in my opinion, beat Lindbergh rimless frames. Marcus T are incredible as well. We're not a stockist of Marcus T, but I have viewed their collection lots of times. I'd like to be a stockist in the future. They have their own facility where they manufacture all of their frames and their quality, in my opinion, is also better than Lindbergh. But the second line that Lindbergh are becoming more popular for are the kind of semi-minimalistic designs where they're in between a rimless frame and a full frame. And I think if you're gonna go down that route, there are a few brands out there that also do it better, whether it's Mykita or IC Berlin or Reykjavik Eyes. Reykjavik Eyes is my most recommended brand because they are the most comfortable glasses in the world the strongest glasses in the world. They require the least maintenance and they look really cool as well. I've got an example to showcase for you today, which is the Elias, which is one of the new models that I featured in my Iceland video just before Christmas, where I went to meet Gunnar Gunnarsson, the inventor of Reykjavik Eyes, and we got to see some brand new prototypes. Well, those are now available. And the Elias is a really, really cool frame. I love it in this semi-gray, semi-copper, two-tone style. I think it looks lovely. But that said, I really want to emphasize the point that I don't think Lindbergh are bad, it's just that they got very arrogant, in my opinion. And whenever that happens to a brand, it stagnates. Pairing that with the fact that opticians just think if you're a Lindbergh stockist, you're selling the best glasses. I see all these fancy optical boutiques and without fail, they always have Lindbergh. You can get better value, more innovation and something a bit more different as well. 
with other brands. And number two, my second most overrated eyewear brand is Oliver Peoples. And while Limburg have that huge, almost cult following in the optical industry, you know, opticians, Oliver Peoples seem to have the same cult following from consumers. And there are so many people out there who think that Oliver Peoples are the be all and end all of glasses. Like they would not even ever consider or think about having any other frame than Oliver Peoples. Trust me, they exist. In fact, I would say it's the most fanatical eyewear brand in terms of customers. And again, I appreciate Oliver Peoples. I think they are reasonably well made. They're probably the best made Luxottica collection. Yes, you heard that right. Oliver Peoples are made by Luxottica, the enemy of independent eyewear who have tried to dominate and monopolize the eyewear market at the expense of a lot of other small, independent and passionate eyewear brands which let's not forget is what Oliver Peoples started off as. And that's how they gained their cult following over the years. And I think most people who buy Oliver Peoples still think they're buying Oliver Peoples glasses. Now, as I said, the quality of Oliver Peoples is still quite a bit higher than the normal Luxottica frame, but it's nothing special nowadays. Again, 10 to 20 years ago, they probably were. That probably represented the best in acetate manufacturing. And at the time, the best acetate frames were made in Italy. Nowadays, Japan has massively exceeded the quality levels we see from Italy. And the best acetate frames are definitely made in Japan, whether that's LA Iwerks, Jack Marie Marge, or Barton Pereira. And if you're a fan of Oliver Peoples, there is absolutely no excuse to not buy a Barton Pereira frame. Because when Oliver Peoples was taken over by Luxottica, two of the most fundamental parts of that company Bill Barton and Patty Pereira left Oliver Peoples to found Barton Pereira. They do now everything that Oliver Peoples stood for, but better and still independent. This model is the Harold and it was my frame of the year for 2022. An absolutely incredible pair of glasses, but you haven't seen it before in pewter. I featured it in the gold, which is in my opinion, the better colorway, but in pewter it's probably more classic and maybe easier to wear for the vast majority of people. But the best bit about the pewter colorway is the sun clip because I love how they've contrasted it with a brown gradient tint and diamond flash coating. To me, you could think of these as sunglasses first and optical glasses second. And this frame, as I mentioned, is handmade in Japan. They have beautiful filigree detail on the temples, following through to the lugs and the bridge. It's an exceptionally made titanium frame that's incredibly comfortable, solid, just feels really nice and reassuring to wear. Like I said, if you're gonna think about buying an Oliver Peoples frame, just don't do it. Buy Barton Pereira, you won't regret it. But my most overrated eyewear brand, the number one, and I know this is really not going to be appreciated by some people, is Dita. Since Robert Downey Jr. wore a Dita frame as Iron Man, the popularity has just exploded off the charts. And Dita aren't necessarily a new brand, they do have a loyal following that they've built up over time. And again, just like I said before, Dita are not bad glasses. They are really good quality glasses, but they're not the best quality. I've never been wowed by a Dita frame and I've held plenty, trust me. It's probably the number one brand that we get people sending their frames into us to create custom tints for. And I'm happy to do it because they're nice glasses. I've never been that impressed. I think they're good quality, but they're not, again, not top tier like I think D2 enthusiasts believe. The other thing is that I feel they are very derivative. I feel like everything that you look for stylistically in a Dita frame, you get in a Kazal frame, but Kazal were the original pioneers of that kind of design. For example, from the Legend series, I've got the 968 here, which is a very retro inspired aviator frame. The kind of typical Dita look that you would get. And you can wear this as a sunglass or as an optical, but I just feel like this is a bit more authentic, a bit more original. I feel like Dita do borrow very heavily from Kazal designs. And to be honest, you could even argue that Dita are better quality than Kazal, but I just don't like that fact that they're not really truly original in my opinion, in my view. That said, you definitely couldn't criticize the quality of Kazal. They are made in Germany as they always have been. And German engineering, we all know, it does tend to stand the test of time. It's simple, but functional. And if you really want that ultra maximalist, bold, blingy look that some Dita frames do give you, 
The 664 is another frame from the Legends series, and this time a huge chunky acetate, complete with real gold-plated elements. Not my taste, but a lot of people who like detail, they like that really over-the-top look, and Kazal were the originals for doing that. I would sooner support a brand like Kazal than Dita, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Now let's talk about some of the most underrated eyewear brands, and I'm a bit more excited to get to this bit. So at number three, my third most underrated eyewear brand is Modo. I don't talk too much about Modo on this channel because I do think that if you're looking for the very best, there are better. For example, Reykjavik Eyes, for example, IC Berlin, Mykita, even Limburg, they are better quality than Modo. But the great thing about Modo is they are half the price of those other brands. And that makes them very underrated because is this frame twice as good as this frame? Probably not. Yes, the design is next level because it's one piece titanium. But if you like a simple titanium frame that is cool, fashionable, nice to wear, strong and durable and reliable, you can't really go wrong with Modo. I wear in my collection two or three different Modo styles I love all of them, they're very comfortable, they've never let me down, I've been happy with all three. I wanted to feature specifically a ladies frame in this video and so I picked out the Moscova from the VS1 collection. What characterizes VS1 are the contrasting inner lens rim. These were designed by Valerio Samella who partnered with Modo for a capsule collection. That's quite some time ago now but you still have some pieces remaining and for me these are the ones to buy within Modo's eyewear line. But even the standard Modo frames, really really good, really well made and most importantly of all, fantastic value. I think people look at brands like IC Berlin, Mykita, Limburg, Reykjavik Eyes even, and don't even consider Modo, but you probably should. And at number two, my second most underrated eyewear brand is Walter and Herbert. There are a plethora of British eyewear brands out there, all of which more or less are really good. You have Anglo-American Optical, which we stock and we featured on this channel quite a number of times. I'm a fan of those. They almost made the cut for this short list of the three most underrated brands because they are definitely underrated. You have Savile Row who have gone through a bit of a turbulent time in recent history. They made the quintessential Harry Potter glasses. Literally, they made the glasses for Harry Potter in the movie. Savile Row have an amazing history. They're all made with uh, real gold, fantastic quality, but the ownership has changed hands a bit recently, so we'll see what happens with that brand. You have Cutler and Gross, but they're not actually made in England, they're made in Italy, but again, absolutely iconic designs and a great eyewear manufacturer. You have Tom Davis, who are good. I don't think they're particularly amazing, but I don't want to hate on them too much in this video. And then you have Walter and Herbert, and Walter and Herbert are just really, really good British-made acetate frames that are, again, amazing value for money. What I see in the eyewear market is a lot of people go at the high end and they want the best of the best. A lot of people don't really care much about the glasses and they go for cheaper products. Walter and Herbert and Modo, they both sit in that mid category. We've got five barrel hinges on this frame, which is called the Stubbs. We've got beautiful blue acetate temples, a lovely smoke gray tortoiseshell front. It's just a really, really nice, but classic British eyewear design. And that's what Walter and Herbert do really, really well. They're not too crazy, they're not too out there, they're not that unique, but they are well-made, well-priced, classic British fashion. A lot of glasses nowadays, they can be a bit ostentatious, a lot of glasses can be boring. These tread that line between kind of a little bit quirky, but not over the top. But just to show like how unique you can go within the Walter and Herbert collection, because they're not afraid to take risks. This is the Chartwell, and it's a limited edition model that they created literally based off Churchill's glasses, so Winston Churchill. The owner of Walton Herbert actually owned Winston Churchill's original glasses and he commissioned a limited edition series of 100 frames to be made as an homage to them. So these follow the exact proportions of Winston Churchill's glasses. And yes, they're not the most stylish by modern standards, but if you're looking for a great pair of reading glasses that have a really unique and historic design, the Chartwell is actually a really good purchase as something that you can keep as like a collector's item. And they come in this lovely packaging with their own presentation box, a lovely genuine leather pouch that's kind of vintagey itself, and a special cloth, which has the image of Winston Churchill in his original glasses on one side and the Walter and Herbert branding on the other side. So it's a nice touch. And the general packaging with Walter and Herbert is great too. You know. For the price you pay for them, which is around about $300 more or less, 
you would be surprised at, at the packaging that comes with them. I think a lot of people would believe they're $500 glasses. And that's where I think a lot of brands like Walsh and Herbert can be a bit underrated because they're almost too cheap. And finally, to finish off the video, my number one most underrated eyewear brand. You think I'm going to say Reki Vikai's? I'm not. The brand that I'm going to showcase for you now, you could argue is better than Reki Vikai's. And I've said that they're the best glasses in the world. My number one most underrated eyewear brand is Luca de Stael. Handmade in Paris from natural materials, whether it's leather, stone, wood. And the beauty of Luca de Stael is they are so effortlessly comfortable. I find them even more comfortable than my Modo frames and almost as comfortable as my Reykjavik Eyes frames. And okay, so they're not as comfortable as those, but you're getting a frame with much more presence, much more to it stylistically, for better or worse. Obviously, I like the minimalism of Reykjavik Eyes, but with Luca de Stel, you're getting a really bold frame. This one made in goat leather. It's a lovely round style. This textured leather that you get from the goat skin is something that really completes them and makes them really quirky and original and different. And I like the two-tone coloration with that accent of turquoise on the inside. It's a really, really nice overall pair of glasses that you could wear every day, but are still special. Now, why do I say they're underrated? Well, nobody's heard of them. And I am shocked by how few Luca de Stael frames we sell, relatively speaking. I have collectors of eyewear coming to me from all over the world. They always want brands like Jack Marie Marge, Chrome Hearts, who are both fantastic, exceptional brands. They want things like Cartier. They want things like Lindbergh, who we've covered, and even Dieter. But Luca de Stael, honestly, 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 are more special than all of those brands. I really, really mean that. The fact that each pair is completely handmade within a very small workshop in Paris from leather. Nobody else is doing leather frames like this. Nobody. Lots of brands are making acetate frames. Lots of brands are making frames with precious materials like gold. Lots of brands are even using wood, for example. But to use stone in a pair of glasses, to use leather, like full leather, all the way through the whole frame is leather. You know, that takes some daring. They've done something that nobody else is doing. And honestly, I think these are the most special frames that you can buy. The best bit about Luca de Stel is the fact you can customize them with any color you want. So you can have cow leather, you can have stingray or iguana leather or goat leather, as you see here. You can customize the temple color, the inside color, the outside color. You could have it stone on the front. You could have it leather on the side. You could have it stone on the side, leather on the front. When you order a pair of Luca de Stel, they are truly personalized to you and the workshop will hand make it for you. I'm gonna be visiting the workshop later this year, bringing you along for the journey. So make sure to subscribe so that you see that. And I really want to see more eyewear enthusiasts trying Luca de Stel. I promise you won't be disappointed. What did you think of my rankings? Were you triggered? Were you offended? Were you upset? I'm sorry if you were, I didn't mean to. I've not talked about any brands in this video that I actually don't think are really good. We're talking about the top tiers of eyewear design, but when you're looking at the top tiers, you really want to know which is better, which is the best, and which is not quite as good as you thought. And hopefully I've cleared that up for you in today's video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like, subscribe to the channel as I keep asking for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.